Welcome to Jags Drive Time with Ashlyn Sullivan, Sullivan, John Osher, Osher, and Brian Sexton. Jags Drive Time starts right now. It's exciting the per- bringing different personalities and different experiences together to build the best possible offense. It's not going to be, we didn't take the Doug's Eagles playbook and roll it out on the table and say, this is what we do. We said, you know, here's kind of the experiences. What do you guys do well? What do you think? What did, Mike, what did you experience in your career coaching XYZ, uh, Jim, Bob, Phil, all these guys were kind of combining everybody together to build the best offense. But I think that can only work if everybody kind of puts their ego aside and is truly in it to do what is best for the Jacksonville Jaguars at the time. That is Press Taylor, Jaguars offensive coordinator, and welcome in to Jags Drive Time. J.P. Shadrick in for Ashlyn Sullivan, Brian Sexton, John Ozer alongside. I- I'm usually up, you know, by noon, so this is kind of early. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> it's nice doing? to see you. How are What's you? What's going on? Oh, how are we doing, man? Good. I'm just making sure my phone's off. It was a good, good it's idea. A, it's it's once in a while. Live TV. That's what uh, we do here. No, good. Good to see you. Hey, good great to, see. Great to be seen. Uh, yes, very much so. Nice. Um, <laughs> well, yeah, it's no the doubt. whiskers that give it away. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been one of those mornings so far. Hey, let's uh, let's get right into it. To the let's big go. things today, we've got a lot to get to. We just heard from Press Taylor, but there's more on the uh, Jaguars' offensive coordinator. He's been around for a little bit. He's just turned 34 years old. He's been around head coach Doug Peterson for a while. He's excited, of course, to work with Trevor Lawrence, and he has seen his communication skill already. Very excited about the opportunity to work with Trevor. All of us are. You know, that was kind of the one thing that when you mentioned there's an opportunity here with the Jaguars, everybody talks about Trevor Lawrence, the character he has. You know, I was, whether fortunate or unfortunate, I was on the opposite sideline the last game of the year with the chance to get to the playoffs, and Trevor comes out. He's like 20 of 25 in the very first half, 9 of 11 on third down. It kind of lit us up and kept us out of the playoffs. So I definitely remember that. At the time, had a bad taste in my mouth, but now on this side of it, I'm like, that, that was very encouraging, very exciting to see. Let's go to defense now. Defensive coordinator Mike Caldwell getting his first opportunity to call the shots in the NFL on defense. He has a good linebacking crew to work with, but most notably, one wearing number 44. I'm excited. I spoke with him yesterday, and the thing, it was on the phone, so just... I could see it through the phone. That sounds kind of funny. I could see it through the phone that he's eager and ready to go. He used to be like, Coach, can I come over? I was like, you know, I'm doing a little bit today. You know, take your time. If you want to swing by tomorrow, I'm fine. But he was ready to go. And you could see the passion in the voice. And one thing he said, he's like, I want to win. And that's what we're about here. I know Doug said it. I'm about it. We're trying to get guys in the best position so we can go out there and win games. You can see through the phone if you FaceTime, that's right. for sure. We hear from Doug Peterson now, the personality of the head coach starting to show through in a few different interview settings. Well, he has an experienced staff, guys who have coached in the NFL before. It is not their first rodeo. I think it's the it's got to be the end-all, be-all type thing that they have NFL experience. However, you know, I'm coming into an opportunity as, as, as a, you know, a new head coach again, even though I've been a head coach, and 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 yet. You know, I want to make sure that there are guys that um, have great experience, great teaching, great knowledge, not only of the game of football, but what we're going to teach, you know, offensively with, with schematics. And um, I, I looked into the, the college, you know, world to, to, to bring guys up. I, I had guys in, in Philadelphia where, you know, they came from college. So um, you're always wanting to hire the best guys. And, and um, you know, some of these guys have actual NFL experience playing, and I think that's important as well. There you have it, our big things today. Let's start with the quarterback conversation. Press Taylor, one of a few different cooks in the kitchen, if yeah. you will, on offense. That's a lot of voices. How do they narrow this down? Well, you know, so you got Mike McCoy, who I think is about 60, who was with Peyton in, um, uh, in Denver, Peyton Manning, and then was the head coach of the Chargers. Um, and Jim Bob, who comes from Detroit. And so, you know, here you got a guy who's just turned 34. What an impressive guy. I mean, I, he had a – he didn't just have an answer for every question, John. He had a good answer. He didn't give you a sentence. He gave you a paragraph, which for guys like us is great to work with. Uh, really sharp guy, and I asked him, how do you handle these guys who are twice your age? But it was pretty apparent. He can handle anything. The guy's really, really sharp. Uh, I was impressed. 
Well, he's been an NFL coach for 10 years, so you sort of have to look at, you know, if he got into it when he was 35 and he was 45 with 10 years' experience, you'd probably look at him a little different. A couple of things. I think Mike McCoy's 50, so he's coming after you. Uh, <laughs> no, no, he's older than that. Uh, I'm going to look it up for you. Uh, and at the beginning, Press Taylor said he's excited to work about Trevor. He's excited to work with Trevor. Well, if he's not, he better get excited. Yeah, that's right. Because that's the deal. And uh, it it is an intriguing staff on in the sense of there are young guys. Press Taylor is a young guy, and uh, Mike Caldwell, who we'll talk about in a minute, is also young in terms of experience. But they back that up with uh, Bob and Jim and, Bob. No, uh, Bob Sutton. Bob Sutton. Defensively, I'm sorry, Bob yeah. Sutton. <laughs> and then there's three very experienced: uh, Jim Bob Cooter. Doug Peterson and Mike McCoy, who's seven you're right, yeah, years no, old. You're, you're right. You're and right. Uh, I got that one wrong. Sorry, Mike. So there are definitely experience mixed with youth. It's an interesting mix in, in what Peterson talked about too. Some of the experience where there's eight years of coaching in the right. NFL, there's ten years of playing, which is Mike Caldwell. So uh, there's balance. It's a young coordinator group, which will be a storyline, but it's backed up by experienced assistants. I just got done. Um, reading Fearless, uh, Doug Peterson's book. Have you guys read that? I have it. I have it. It's worth scared. Yeah, I actually listened to it on Audible, and it was a really good read, and he talks at length about the... uh, So you listened. You didn't read it. It's the same thing, right? Close enough. I absorbed it. (laughs) It, It's it's about six hours. It's a really interesting listen. Um, A lot of it, because his time in the league as a player kind of coincides with our time, right? You know, covering this league Very much and, so. and JPU watching it and then covering it. Um, really, he had a couple of points that he wanted to make. He was, and he talks about this in his book, and he's talked about it here a little bit. The fearless, right? He wants people to create energy when they come into the building every day. He wants people to eliminate distractions. He wants people to fear nothing, and he wants his team to attack everything. And it, that theme kind of goes through the book, and it's it's just. I really enjoyed it. I highly recommend it to anybody who is watching this morning. If you want an inside look at a guy who came up from being undrafted and working with Don Shula to winning a championship uh, with the Eagles. Tremendous, tremendous story. A good story well told. Uh, Now, as we know, a lot of coaches can author books. We've known this from coaches that have been around here before. But when you have the teeth behind it, and the jewelry at the highest level to go with that and the success, I think that's a, a different uh, feel. Well, I, I told you that I read it because it, it was interesting to talk about what he was looking for. And, and, and Press Taylor's a guy he talks about a lot in the book and how he constructed the defense and let it go with Jim Johnson mm-hmm. when he became the head coach there. So if you're looking for some insight into ways that he thinks, he says early in the book, I think differently, right? When he breaks up a season, he doesn't break it up into quarters like a lot of teams, a lot of, a lot of coaches do. He breaks it up into meaningful segments, and all of them are different. I just, I found him to be very interesting and entertaining. Yeah, and I, I don't think it's a coincidence that everybody or the main guys on staff have had great success at some level. Caldwell, Super Bowl champion with the Bucks. Press Taylor was with them in Philadelphia. Uh, these guys have won at the highest level, and uh, we'll see how it goes. We will. I mean, th- th- that's the bottom line. We can talk about the press conference all we want. <laughs> Jaguars fans have been uh, have been through a lot of press conferences. By so the way, we'll did anybody wonder when Mike Caldwell started his press conference why they let Zoe up there? Remember Zoe from PR staff who works for the Dolphins now? He looks exactly like Zoe. Hmm. Were you not here when Zoe? There's was a there? resemblance. Yeah, yeah, I can see. It. I was really strong. I thought, what is Zoe doing up there? There you have it. Anyway, those liked, are big things. I liked Caldwell. Yes, yeah, I like uh, a lot. Excited to see what they come up with on defense, and then what this offense thing's going to look like. All the, all, as we said, all the voices that are involved there. So a lot to be done, not a lot of time to get there. We're back in a moment, though, with a look at a few prospects. The the NFL scouting combine is coming up next week. The Jaguars, as you might have heard, have the number one overall pick in the twenty twenty two NFL draft. We'll touch on a few key names when we return. We're off and running. It's Jags Drive Time on the Jaguars Digital Network. Your family isn't like anyone else's. Your home shouldn't be either. At DreamFinders Homes, you can build the home of your dreams in one of their 30-plus communities in Northeast Florida. Choose from luxury single-family homes or maintenance-free townhomes from the 200s. DreamFinders specializes in homes built to fit your lifestyle. 
To find out more, call 904-738-0165 or visit dreamfindershomes.com. Hi folks, Frank Franzi here to tell you where to find the most authentic Southern Pit Barbecue in all of Jacksonville. That's right, Bono's. For 72 years, Bono's has been smoking real pit barbecue right here on the First Coast. Smoked for hours, served in minutes, and always cut to order. You can find Bono's locations all around town and on game day at TIAA Bank Field. Bono's is the official barbecue of the Jacksonville Jaguars. If you want great barbecue, head to Bono's today. If you don't see a pit, it ain't legit. At Star Credit Union, you inspire us to deliver on our promise, to do good for our members and our communities. That's why we offer more banking options, like better rates and no hidden fees. We also give back, donating several million dollars to hundreds of nonprofits each year. Better financial lives, stronger communities. Star Credit Union. Do good. Bank better. Visit fivestarcu.org slash join. Insured by NCUA. Jags Drive Time continues on this Tuesday morning, and the time is now to renew your 2022 Jaguars season tickets. The stage is set for Coach Doug Peterson and quarterback Trevor Lawrence. Don't miss a second of the action. Season ticket members who renew by March 4th will also be entered to win one of 54 scratch packs. They contain prizes ranging from signed merchandise, exclusive access to events at the bank, and even a trip to the draft in Las Vegas. J.P. Shadrick in for Ashlyn Sullivan, John Osher, Brian Sexton, Joe Fortunato, Blake Stewart. Glad you're along with us today. Uh, The NFL Scouting Combine is coming up next week in Indianapolis, and there was some news earlier this week over the weekend that some agents were talking about a boycott of the event because of the bubble for players that the league had announced. Well, the Combine changed the rule as of, I believe, yesterday, and it will be uh, free and open for all these players. They won't be stuck in the bubble in the hotel room. So uh, the Jaguars, of course, have the number one overall pick. And uh, there's all these mock drafts. It's mock draft season, John. Your favorite. The you know I love it. It's, I do it's love all it. over the place. Uh, Brian, I know you're a mock draft. I enjoy you, it. You. It's, it's not just, as interesting when you're number one. You eat them up all the time. Well, it's interesting to see who who, who has the Jaguars picking a tackle or picking a defensive, defensive lineman end. or Is those are really else? the only two yeah, so it. far. Let's go through a couple of those names. You know, there's. Let's start with Evan Neal, the the tackle from Alabama. He has been mocked to the Jaguars quite a bit, of course. Uh, he's played three different positions at Alabama. In 19, he was the left guard. In 2020, he was the right tackle. But this past season, he was the left tackle. And uh, 6'7", 350 will get you paid, and, and he can play. Well, and I'm sure you've seen the video, the box jump video. I mean, Alabama guy. Have you seen that? Yes. Um, he has it on constant loop. I, well, I, <laughs> Have you seen mine? Is the <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. Those were bricks you were here. jumping on, right? Um, this guy jumps on 48-inch boxes at 6'7", 350, and, and manages to keep his balance. It, it's a stunning piece of video if anyone hasn't seen it. Um, seen a lot of very athletic tackles in this league. That might be the most athletic move I've ever seen an offensive tackle make. Yeah, I mean, there's all sorts of debate on this. We're going to talk about Hutchinson next. People ha- have, have sort of cooled on uh, Thibodeau from Oregon a little bit. Those are sort of the three that everybody's talking about with the Jags. And I get questions about this all the time, and – People want to ask, do they take left tackle philosophically? Do they take a pass rusher? What's better? I think you have to be careful of that. Take the guy that you think is going to be great. And yep. I, I, if they're all equal, which they never are, you know, I probably go pass rusher because of the disruption. But you can fall into a trap of that of assuming that these guys are the same. And if, if you draft the number one overall pick, and it's the right position, and he can't play. You know what you got? You got nothing. Yeah. So, I, you know, it's it's so hard to project guys, and that's what we have to do all this all this time. But I just think that's the thing you got to be careful with when they make that pick on you know April twenty eighth. Oh, they didn't pick the position I wanted. They've got to get the guy right, and in the position later. I like Neil. I like his his athleticism. I have no problem with the concept of uh, of left tackle. I just want to make sure he's great. I, um, I'm sure you guys get it too. You know, why won't they trade down? Why would they stay there? And and I'm not sure if people who don't follow this as closely as we do understand. You, you got to have two sides. Someone's got to want to come up. You realize they're 
But seven, in Madden, what you do, Brian, is, uh, I know. is you and hit I don't play A. Madden. I don't, you, I, you hit A. I know. And there's a trade. I don't. And that's I, cool. I don't play Madden, <laughs> so right, well, I, I don't know. But but I'll, I'll catch up. You've got four offensive tackles and three defensive ends that are probably going in the top ten. So why would somebody give up a, a king's ransom right. to come to number one when they can stay right where they're at at number seven, or or somebody at number fifteen can go to seven and it costs them less? It, there's just not that compelling, you know, let's trade up mentality. So yeah, if, no you're gonna, if you're going to if you're going to stay there, and it, in all likelihood they are, you're going to have a choice between one of these guys who is an elite looking athlete, elite looking player. I say looking because they got to come do it at this level. There've been a lot of guys that have been outstanding numerically and on college tape that haven't translated. And obviously, you know, whatever happens with Cam Robinson will, will come into play here. He was on the franchise tag last year, just over $13 million. That bumps up if you're franchised a second time. I believe the the, the offensive line twenty percent. It's like $16, $17 yeah. million this year. It's, yeah. it's a big number. So, And the deadline for that is March 8th. We'll have a better idea of what they're really thinking at tackle. Well, that could obviously change what happens in the draft then. And here's what's fascinating about that, though. I have no idea if they're going to franchise Cam or not. Right. Um, it's certainly a viable option if they do it. But even if they don't, you really haven't solved the question of if, you know, in a lot of years you would say, well, if, if they don't bring Cam back, they're automatically going to uh, draft Evan Neal. But you have Walker Little. That's correct. Who conceivably they just took in the second round last year. So if they let Cam go, they could still have options at the top of the draft because if, if they go past rusher, and you say, we're going to uh, plug Walker Little in. He's our guy. He played well the last two games. This is the strangest uh, thing to analyze, the Jaguars' offensive line right now, because there are more moving parts on this position in these few weeks than any uh, position analysis that I've ever covered on this team. And they won't, there's such a new staff, and they haven't been able right. to get their hands on the right. guys that are here yet. So Speaking they haven't time. seen that in, in person yet. Well, and Doug and, and all the coordinators said, it's just too early to tell what kind, what your scheme's going to be, what your line's going to look like, how you're going to play defense until they have more time to see what they've got. Let's get to Aiden Hutchinson now from Michigan, the Heisman Trophy runner-up this past season, the third-ever defensive player to finish second in Heisman history, the player of the year in the Big Ten this past season. Big sack numbers, athletic all over the place, the Michigan team had a fantastic season. He was a major reason why. And you know what? You can never have too many good elite defensive linemen, John. No, it, and the thing, you know, is, is he Bosa, Bosa, or Taylor? And or, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Chase Young. Yeah. Is he one of those guys? Um, if he is, take him and high-five yourself back to Jacksonville. Yeah, the word is he's not at – but I don't that know. level. Right. But so, but if he is, I mean, you saw Bosa take the game over here. I mean, he just, whether he made the tackle or not, he was crashing down the line and making Juwan Taylor reach, mm -hmm. which just made everything go for the Niners. The Jaguars couldn't deal with Bosa. If he's that, right. oh, I mean, yeah, you can't go but wrong. But that's the dilemma at the top this year is there's really not a feeling, and it could be wrong, but the feeling among draft Knicks is there's really not, when you say, is he Bosa, they say, eh, not quite. Yeah. Uh, Evan Neal, is he, you know, there's talk that he might move position. So is he absolutely elite? Uh, maybe they are, but that's the question. That's the conversation going on among draft picks right now. Of course. And I'm sure inside the war room. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Kayvon Thibodeau, another name that's been mocked there occasionally to the Jaguars as well on the defensive line. We've got plenty ahead. This and that, when we return, we'll go with this or we'll go with that. That's the name of the game, right? Yeah, it is. I mean, I'm new here. No, it's easy. You got this one. Making JP. sure I got it. I don't, you know, I don't want to mess things up no, on no, this Tuesday this morning. This is Jags Drive Time on the Jaguars Digital Network. Jaguars fans, here's a great way to pay with pride wherever you go. Exclusively from TIAA Bank, the Jacksonville Jaguars Visa Debit Card comes with a fierce look and fantastic features, along with the convenience to make purchases online or at millions of locations worldwide. And it's yours, free, when you open a Yield Pledge checking account. Order yours today. Visit TIAABank.com slash JagsCard. TIAA Bank is a division of TIAA, FSB, member FDIC, and the official bank of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Fans like you have been told that going all out is going too far. But fans like you know better. 
You're the kind of fan who loves the team as much as your pet, who paints yourself for game days and dyes your pet's fur to match. You are a rare breed. You are a pet fanatic, equal parts pet obsessed and diehard sports fan. At Pet Paradise, they're crazy about pets too. The official pet care provider of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Pet Paradise, it's a new day in pet care. Your family isn't like anyone else's. Your home shouldn't be either. At DreamFinders Homes, you can build the home of your dreams in one of their 30 plus communities in Northeast Florida. Choose from luxury single family homes or maintenance free townhomes from the 200s. DreamFinders specializes in homes built to fit your lifestyle. To find out more, call 904 738 0165 or visit dreamfindershomes.com. This or that. This or that. Welcome back. It's Jags Drive Time. And as you could tell, it's time for This or That. Brian, what you got for us? Well, let's go right back to the argument. Uh, do you keep Cam or do you draft Evan? And I'll start and say that I would draft Evan. I think Cam Robinson is a much better player than people give him credit for. Um, but I think he's probably about as good as he'll ever be. And I don't know that he's the athlete that Evan Neal is. You get uh, stronger, longer, uh, cheaper, younger at a premium position with a guy that's got incredible upside. And so I think I would draft Evan Neal and uh, take that cap room and apply it in other places. Yeah, and then the counter argument also makes sense, though. I mean, if true, you've got pieces on the offensive line that – have served you good uh, you know I can't call this offensive line last couple of years great but it has been again I use the phrase better than people uh often believe so there's so many needs on the roster that to keep Cam Robinson who is I think only gave up one sack last year yes was not a bad player at all no he's a better player than people think he and is. you've got pieces you know conceivably put walker little at uh, right tackle uh, Juwan taylor inside conceivably they have a a more than workable plan if they don't go your route right with nfl starters who have uh, done the job so i i definitely but it's going to be one of those two. I would love to see them be dominant on the offensive line. Yes, that's what I think. They haven't been chance. dominant, and your path makes sense to get to dominant. Yep. Let's move along. Well, what do you think? The, well, um, well, I think Cam Robinson is a very good run blocker, too. He has that finish, that physicality to him, and a little bit of an edge to him that, um, you know, that this team could use, I think. Uh, and there's, you know, uh, and Evan, Evan Neal's moved around. He's versatile if you really need him to be. Yeah. I don't think you're drafting him one overall to play at guard, though. Mm -hmm. So, you know, those are some big questions. And like you said well, earlier, Walker Little's there, too. Is he ready? Is yeah. he the next step? Uh, the GM is here. Obviously, he was around when they drafted him. But the coaching staff has not been. Do they like him enough? Do they want to move him up and elevate him? I, I, those are all big questions. Yeah, I think that's the wild card there yeah. is uh, Walker Little, you know, what is he? Is is he elite? If they believe he's elite, then you probably go a different direction. Sure. So. John, keep us moving here on this or that. Yeah, and I went with, uh, you know, probably a little early for, early for draft talk since we've got uh, the combine. But since we've got the combine coming up, we'll go with it. Go conventional in the draft, which uh, mm. to me, or go weird. Go conventional is either defensive line or offensive line. Uh, one of the two pass rushers or offensive tackle. Go weird is a safety Kyle Hamilton from Notre Dame. Uh, one of the wide receivers who really, I don't think, quite merit moving up. I mean, uh, taking number one, you've got uh, Drake London, uh, Garrett Wilson, several guys. Yeah. Usually I would, you know, I don't think they'll go weird, but the argument for going weird is the one that we were having earlier in the show. There's really not a guy at number one who people are saying absolutely number one overall generational player. They think Kyle Hamilton might be a safety yeah. like that. Uh, the intriguing thing to me, JP, would be if this was a year where Jamar Chase was in the draft or a elite number one wide receiver, one of your Bama guys, one of the 19 guys who have mm -hmm. come into the league, mm -hmm. 
would you know if, if uh, Jameson Wilman, uh, uh, Jameson Williams, Williams was healthy, man. your guy uh, healthy, yeah. yeah, would it be a year where the Jaguars just went, you know what, we need impact there? Uh, I don't think they'll go weird because it's so hard to predict weirdness, but it it is a year where as the draft gets closer, uh, you may hear more talk of something like that than you normally would. I think they go conventional. So I, I would agree with you, um, although I just got done saying that in his book. Uh, Doug Peterson talks about not wanting to block himself in and limit himself. Um, so it probably will be get difficult to get him to say, well, it's going to be offensive defensive line coach because he'll want to keep it open. I think the only player worth going weird for is the Hamilton kid, the, the safety right. from Notre Dame, because he's almost 6'4 and 230 pounds and runs well and is that outlier. I mean, if right. he's Ed Reed, and right. so people have said he's got Ed Reed in a much bigger body. Well, I mean, you couldn't go wrong with that. Yeah, safety scare people, but... As you said, I don't think there's ever been a safety taken in the modern history of the draft. No, no, uh, not number one. Sean Taylor was four, I think, and and it may have been one higher. But if you think that if you think Evan Neal or the pass rushers are good, and you think that Kyle Hamilton is uh, Sean Taylor or Ed Reed, yeah, when it's that elite, that position, I I don't think you would do it. If it was an elite center, I still don't think you would do it. Probably not. But But elite safety, yeah, you know. Well, he's, maybe it gets weird. Yeah, I well, like be, weird because of what he can do in the middle of the field. I mean, he's more than just a safety. Yeah, guy, right. I mean, he's one of those hybrid guys that. I mean, it, if he, you told me now, could I have Ed Reed number one overall? Oh, back yeah, when you he take got that. taken. You'd probably take it. So. Here's, here's the other thing about it: is there are a bunch of good offensive tackles, some that will be available at the bottom of the first round. And so, if there's someone who's sliding, See? you got 12 picks. You can move back up if there's that guy that you like. Well, you pick 33rd yeah. also, w- without a doubt. And then the other thing is, there's a bunch of receivers that are going to be, you know, in that bottom third of the draft. So if some Somebody's sliding. You have 12 picks total. You can get two in the third round. You can vault up into the bottom of the first round and get one of those guys. So it's probably not as far off as you think that they can talk about Kyle yeah. Hamilton. Let's get weird. I like I'm it. going with yeah. that one. That's a line from a movie. Do you remember which movie? I'm sure a few. Stripes. Bill Murray. Ah, there you yeah. go. Good point. Great movie. Uh, and my this or that well, kind of goes to the theme of actually going conventional. O-line or D-line? Well, the question I have here is which one needs or will have the most change at the end of this offseason on it? That's an interesting question because what's this defense going to look like? What kind of scheme will they really run? Um, Who are the interior players? Who are you going to have? Who are you adding? Who are you keeping? What's going on there? And then the O-line is a whole question mark as well. I I go offensive line. Um, I happen to just think that Evan Neal is the kind of guy, because of his versatility and his run game and his reach, who creates dominance for you if you maneuver the offensive line right. Um, And so I I would say offensive line, because the quarterback's my number one priority, making him comfortable in the pocket. Yeah, Yeah, they're both tricky spots, because for the last couple years when I've written about the offensive line, I've written often – it's good, but it needs to be great. You f- have that same feeling after last year about the defensive line. Good moments. You like Smoot. You like Josh Allen. You like some mm-hmm. things these guys did. But was it great? And how do you get great in the NFL? Well, usually the safest way to do that is with a top 10 pick. I mean, it, that's what it's supposed to be. <laughs> right. so, so which group do they – You know, I think they're in a sense they're in a good spot because if you go into next season – with Smoot starting and with Josh Allen and with those guys, you know what those guys can give you, and and they've been serviceable. You know, Josh has been more than serviceable, but they've been okay. So they're in a good spot. They're not desperate, but which spot do they want to be great at? You want to be great at both. Which spot is more important than to be great at? I can sit here one day and talk about defensive line. It's a philosophical, yeah. I, I, I can sit here the next day and talk right. about offensive line because well, I would love to see them more disruptive on the quarterback. Can't you just see the grades being equal? You know, 95.1, 95.0, one guy just slightly ahead of the other. I mean, it's, and mm-hmm. that's their subjectivity, mm-hmm. right? Looking and saying, well, offensive line we place at a higher value. I mean, they're, they're going to come in right next to each other yeah. grade wise. You, you can't go wrong with either one of these guys if they are the players that we kind of believe they are but you can create a dominant offensive or defensive line what do they think is more important yep. and the x factor there is often to me it feels harder to circle back at the top of the second and get great pass rush yeah. than it is to get okay offensive tackle that's right and yep i don't know that uh, to be true you know 
PFF might look at that and say it's a, that's wrong, but that's what it feels like. It, it's a harder to get elite pass rusher circling back. Yeah, because those guys are gone in the top 15, yeah. and then all of a sudden you can get Cam Robinson was the top of the second right. round. Well, that's true. Right. Right. Don't forget, though, that Tony Brackens was thought to be a top five pick, and they got him at the top of the second round. And there are plenty of guys. Justin Houston was a third round pick. Um Oh, the guy from Kansas City, Allen. Uh, Jared Allen was a yeah. sixth round pick, and he was a long snapper. So I mean, you can, it's it, how good of a scouting staff do you have, right? Put the right grades on people and then pick. That's this or that. And we'll come back in a moment with some final thoughts. It's Jags Drive Time on the Jaguars Digital Network. Your family isn't like anyone else's. Your home shouldn't be either. At DreamFinders Homes, you can build the home of your dreams in one of their 30-plus communities in Northeast Florida. Choose from luxury single-family homes or maintenance-free townhomes from the 200s. DreamFinders specializes in homes built to fit your lifestyle. To find out more, call 904-738-0165 or visit DreamFindersHomes.com. At ViStar Credit Union, you inspire us to deliver on our promise, to do good for our members and our communities. That's why we offer more banking options, like better rates and no hidden fees. We also give back, donating several million dollars to hundreds of nonprofits each year. Better financial lives, stronger communities. ViStar Credit Union. Do good. Bank better. Visit ViStarCU.org slash join. Insured by NCUA. Fans like you have been told that going all out is going too far. But fans like you know better. You're the kind of fan who loves the team as much as your pet. Who paints yourself for game days and dyes your pet's fur to match. You are a rare breed. You are a pet fanatic. Equal parts pet obsessed and diehard sports fan. At Pet Paradise, they're crazy about pets too. The official pet care provider of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Pet Paradise. It's a new day in pet care. Final moments of Jags Drive Time. J.P. Shadrick in for Ashlyn Sullivan, Brian Sexton, John Osier coming up this week. Uh, huddle up. we got to get with Bucky at some point. He's had a busy couple of weeks. We've got uh, Jags uh, happy hour on Thursday afternoon. We're still on, uh, you know, waiting for whatever happens with the executive vice president role. That's been relatively quiet mm-hmm. lately. The Combine's next week, of course. And then, as we've mentioned, the um, – the deadline for franchise tagging a player is March 8th. That's two weeks from today. So there you have it, John. I, I, I think the window opens today. Yeah, that's right. And But usually on that, the deadline in the last two or three days is when you have news. So it's open, but I expect it to sit open for a while, and then we'll see at the end of, the, of that period what happens with uh, perhaps Cam Robinson's the most likely – to be discussed there, maybe DJ Chark. Yeah, well, Chark is about $19 million, I think. Right. So. Well, the other thing they could be doing in this two-week window is negotiating and doing a long-term deal and avoiding the franchise. That's, That's an option, too. Yeah. They've got the cap room. If they like these guys and want to keep them, they can do a more cap-friendly deal than the franchise, and that's why the franchise tag is there, to incentivize teams to get deals done. Well, guys, thanks a lot. It's uh, nice to, to step hey, in. This in. is what the morning is like. It is. Absolutely. It's nice to see you up and bright-eyed early in the morning. <laughs> bright-eyed, bushy-tailed. Uh, what a day it's been. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, of course, our coverage throughout the week on Jaguars.com as we get ready for the NFL Scouting Combine next week. For Blake Stewart, Joe Fortunato, Brian Sexton, and John Osier, I'm J.P. Shadrick. We'll catch you next time. It's Jags Drive Time on the Jaguars Digital Network.